sorry, I saw a guy uploaded a video to YouTube of him farting and it got nearly 7 million views, so I thought it was worth a try. <laughs> well, today I'm going to give you my top 10 reasons why I believe the Earth is flat. Now, we've known that the Earth is a globe since about 500 BC, and despite thousands of years worth of evidence, there are still some people that like to claim it's flat. Thanks, the internet. Yes. I definitely believe the Earth is flat. And the guy in today's video is no exception. He's given his top 10 reasons why he thinks the Earth is flat. Please subscribe. Now you're probably wondering why I've called this video the top 10 ways to make proven Earth isn't flat effortless. Well, it's pretty obvious. Come on. It's because flat earthers do a perfectly good job of proving the Earth is a globe themselves. Enrique, how high is your light? We don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. It's now been over three years since I have believed that the Earth is flat. And like everyone else, when I first heard about it, I thought it was a joke. Hang on a second. You, you mean to tell me it isn't a joke? I thought this whole time that this was all just a giant wind up. <laughs> you serious? But it doesn't matter what I think anyway. I'm just a stupid YouTuber. What does particle physicist Professor Brian Cox think? It is drivel. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty fair assessment. I began to see um, pop-ups on my YouTube screen about Flat Earth. Ah, so like most other Flat Earthers, you started to believe the Earth was flat because you watched YouTube videos from other people who already believe that the Earth is flat. So all really scientific and unbiased viewpoints then. The first, first reason is, is very simple. There has never been one scientific test or experiment that has proved that the Earth moves. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. People have done various experiments and have tried to prove that the Earth moves, but they can't. Well, that clip was from Bob Nodell. He's a flat Earther, isn't he? He's one of you, a gang. And that was his clip where he proved that the Earth drifts at 15 degrees per hour because it's... No, nothing. Well, the second reason really is a very good reason, a very profound reason. And that is that science's explanation of the supposed four different movements of the earth is ludicrous. Stand up! It's always being a flat earther, but you still do that. And not understanding something or not liking the explanation doesn't make it any less true. But here's the first one. Now everybody knows this. Uh, the first movement that, that people know about is the that the earth supposedly spins on its axis eastward a full rotation every day and that's how we get day and night right well first things first there's no supposedly about it that's pretty much exactly what happens but earth does not spin it revolves not spins revolves and bob's proven that anyway if that's true then the earth is spinning at the equator at the speed of 1000 miles per hour hmm very interesting if only there was a way to prove that by using data that we know to be true like for example the fact that the earth is 24901 miles around i wonder what would happen if you punched that into some sort of calculator right there. Then, speed distance time calculator. Distance is 24,901 miles an hour. It took us 24 hours to travel that distance. <gasps> we were traveling at 1,037.54 mile an hour, which is really close to the 1,000 mile an hour flat earthers can't seem to understand. It's almost as if it's true. Scientists say that the Earth moves around the sun in a nearly circular orbit at the rate of 67,000 miles per hour. <laughs> well, I don't want to be pedantic, but scientists don't say that at all. Scientists describe it as an elliptical orbit because that's what it is. And it was discovered by Kepler. And again, just because flat earthers can't wrap their tiny little brains around it doesn't mean it isn't true. Now, this is supposedly how we would get our changing seasons. That as the earth moved around the sun, then the tilting of the earth would change, the way that the sun supposedly hits the earth would change and therefore give us the different 
in our seasons. So one of your flat earth proofs is to explain how the seasons occur on earth because it's a globe. So we have the earth spinning at a thousand miles an hour and then we have the earth moving at 67,000 miles per hour around the sun. That's only two of the four movements of the earth. Thank you mate, I was starting to worry a little bit because I haven't been keeping count. The third, our solar system, the sun, the earth and the planets, Venus, Mars, etc. whirl around the center of our galaxy at 490,000 miles per hour. 515,000 miles per hour actually and it does take us 230 million years to make one trip so we do need to get a bit of a shift on. <laughs> well, which way is it moving? Is it going this way? Is it going that way? While the earth is going this way and then while it's doing this? So you've got these three movements going on but that's not all. Our galaxy is hurtling toward the great attractor. The great attractor. No, they will not believe in God, but there is a great attractor. Now, we don't know a great deal about the great attractor, but what we do know is that it's capable of pulling millions upon millions of star systems towards it. And we also know that our own galaxy is moving towards it at over a million miles per hour. But it's 250 million light years away, so we probably are okay for time. And as far as they go, and obviously I don't know who they are, but the reason they can accept that the great attractor is real but can't accept that God is real is because we can observe the great attractor. And how fast is it going? The whole galaxy is rushing toward the great attractor at 2,227,273 miles per hour. And the great attractor is 150 million light years away from us. How far is that? Well, a light year is six trillion miles. So 150 million light years represents 9 times 10 to the 20th power miles away, which is 100 quintillion miles away. So pretty far then. And far be it from me to correct the flat earth that I wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. More recent estimates suggest that it's more like 250 million light years away. I'm just saying. Well, that's my second reason why I believe that we live on a flat earth, because there's no way. There's no way that the earth is moving in four directions at speeds that boggle the mind. So the reason this guy can't accept that the earth is a globe is because he can't understand any of the evidence that demonstrates that it is. And as far as boggling the mind of a flat earther, that wouldn't take much boggling. <laughs> Speeds that we can't even comprehend. Well, that's what I just said. Because flat earthers can't comprehend the evidence that demonstrates earth is a globe, it's flat. My third reason why I believe that we live on a flat earth is that there is a fixed order of the stars, the sun, and the moon. A fixed order. Now there's no logical or reasonable way for us to even explain how could these stars stay in the same order for thousands of years? How could we have the constellations Orion and all the others that are out there? How could we have these constellations perfectly, perfectly aligned forever, as far as the memory of man is concerned, if the Earth was hurtling through space in four different directions at crazy speeds? But stars are not fixed, they're constantly moving. How could it be that everything just happened to work out perfectly? That the Earth is spinning, the Earth is going around the Sun, the solar system, the Sun, and the planets are moving around the center of the galaxy, and then the whole galaxy is hurtling toward the great attractor at a mad rate. But yet, but yet, we see the fixed order of the Sun, the Moon, and the stars. Because like every other flat earther, you're forgetting about one crucial thing. Well, two, maybe. Distance. The scale of the galaxy. 
I'm going to have to whip out the old Father Ted clip again, aren't I? Okay, one last time. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. Fourth reason that I believe in a flat Earth is that there is no Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect states that you have to make adjustments with things for the movement of the to adjust for the movement of the Earth. So, for example, the Earth is supposedly moving to the east at about a thousand miles per hour, and so if you have an airplane that's flying, and that airplane has to land on a runway that's running from south to north, and it's coming in from the south, the Coriolis effect would say that that airplane has to be moving a little bit to the east in order to just hit that runway right. But they do. Planes constantly have to make adjustments. There are all sorts of forces trying to force them away from their flight path, including the Coriolis effect. But to be completely honest with you, I don't want to discuss anything aeroplane related with you because you were the guy who made a video saying why don't planes turn upside down when they're flying to Australia. Number five, the fifth reason I believe in a flat earth is that airplanes, you know, they fly level, right? If they were flying over a sphere, they would constantly have to be dipping their nose down in order to stay with the contour of the Earth. Because if they didn't, they would shoot up into space. Well, that's too stupid to even deserve an answer, so let's hear number six. You cannot have independent wind currents on the Earth if the Earth moved in four different speeding directions. You could not have storm systems with independent uh, wind velocities and so on. Well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Because number five was also denying the Coriolis effect. So why would number six be any less stupid? My seventh reason for believing in a flat earth is that water surfaces are always level, never curved. Water is always level. Why do they call it sea level? Because it's the base level for measuring elevation and depth on Earth. There would be no sea level if the Earth were curved because the sea would always be at a different level. What? Sea level is sea level. It's at a particular place where everything from there is considered to be up or down. Exactly. But how does that prove that the Earth is flat? It just proves that you understand what sea level actually means. You're just misinterpreting it to fit in with your idea of how the world looks. My eighth reason, there is no observable curvature over either water or land. <sighs> of course there's not. Sorry, I saw a guy uploaded a video to YouTube of him farting and it got nearly 7 million views, so I thought it was worth a try. <laughs> Now, the ninth reason is, is this. If the Earth is a sphere, then there is curvature on the Earth. Do you understand what that means? If the Earth is a sphere, there is curvature on the Earth. But there actually is curvature on the Earth, so I'm not really understanding where you're going to go with this. Now, there is a logical theorem, logical truth, I have completed entire courses in logic, by the way. Well, I hope they weren't paid courses, and if they were, you need to check the refund policy. This is called the contrapositive statement. The contrapositive is this. If there is no curvature, then the Earth is not a sphere. So you know that it's a logically true statement to say that if the Earth is a sphere, then there is curvature. That is logically true. The contrapositive statement is also true, and it says, if there is no curvature, no curvature, then the Earth is not a sphere. Yeah, but that makes it not true because the Earth is a sphere and there is curvature, which is very easy to see. And finally, last but not least, all scripture references. No, 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 it doesn't matter what it says in the Bible. The Bible is not a scientific textbook. Use logic. Think for yourself. Think for yourself.
think for yourself. Very wise words, especially considering they've just come out of the mouth of a flat earther. Whatever you do, don't listen to anything this turkey just said. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you. Bye. All right, all right. Watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.